Hey, what's going on YouTube? Carter here, got another video for you. This is gonna be kind of a uh, knife revisit video. This is my Kershaw Junkyard Dog with the composite blade. Now, I picked this knife up over a year ago and one of my first YouTube videos uh, was actually on this knife where I did a review. It was about 11 months ago. I haven't even watched it in forever. I don't know how good it is. Probably not very good. But I have been carrying this around for shits and gigs uh, while I've been waiting for my SMF to get back and uh, figured I'd do kind of an update on this blade and go over some of the features that I have discovered since then as well as kind of talk about my opinion on composite blades and uh, it's not that favorable actually. Uh, first off let's talk about the amazingness of this knife. Uh, this is a really awesome good sized tactical flipper folder. Uh, rides well in the pocket, well kind of, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the ergonomics on this is just outstanding. Just feels great in the hand, it's got great functional jimping back here, it's got great functional jimping on the flipper, it flips smooth and strong, no blade play, made in the USA, uh, high quality G10, great fit and finish, uh, the G10 is not that grippy, but you don't really need it because of the ergonomics of the hand. You get this finger choil here and the jimping. I mean, it's, you know, why make it grippy if you don't need to, right? That's my take on it. it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the pocket. If you don't need super grippy G10, why put it on there? Features a composite blade, so it's got a softer, tougher steel for the blade here, and then a harder, better edge retention D2 steel on the edge here. The different colors, that's just aesthetics. Uh, obviously the steel wouldn't actually be a different color, but they just do that to kind of draw more attention to it. And it features, uh, I believe, copper spacing between the two steels there. Um, so overall, it's a very good knife. You may have noticed the completely hideous pocket clip that looks like a Bud K Fantasy Knife reject here. That is the number one complaint about this knife. Uh, both visually, it looks terrible, and also functionally, uh, it takes up almost half uh, surface area of the back of that scale. I mean, that's a huge thing hanging out of your pocket with all these sharp edges and weird curves and circles, draws a lot of attention gets in the way and it's not necessary. You don't need a pocket clip this big and wide and funky to work. And also it is tip down only, which is pretty mind boggling. I know there's a few tip downers out there, but the majority of people prefer tip up, myself included. And while I was carrying it, it was, uh, once I got used to it, it wasn't too bad, but there are extra movements. You know, I'd go to grab the knife and I'd kind of have to flip it around in my hand in order to uh, engage it. So that's a definite downside. Um, but other than that though, this is, you know, it's a really nice blade and I'd recommend it, absolutely. You can get it in different flavors. I think there's a couple different composites with different steels and then there's just the regular version with all one steel. That brings me up to my next topic, composite blades. Um, you know, at first, like most people, I thought it was really cool. Awesome idea, right? Use a softer, tougher steel for the main blade portion, and then use a harder, more brittle, better edge retention steel on the actual working edge. Sounds great, right? Until I really started to think about it. And what does that really give you? Okay, so you have, you have a tougher steel up here to prevent breakage. Well, where is the blade going to break? I mean, really, when you're using the blade, have you ever broken? A blade right here, right here, right here. I haven't. I've never seen it. Uh, about the only thing you could break is the tip, right? Well, the tip is the softer, brittle D2 steel. So if this whole blade was D2, you'd be just as likely to break the tip off as you would if it was a composite blade. So I really, I don't see the benefit. I would rather have had an all D2 steel blade. I don't think having a composite blade gives you, in all reality, anything beneficial than just making the whole thing out of one kind of steel. I mean, I guess if they address the tip issue and maybe tapered the D2 off so that it met that tip, that way you could say, well, you've, you've got a stronger tip now, so you don't have to worry about that breaking off. Maybe that would be enough to kind of 
I still think it's just a gimmick. I think it's a, a way to sell knives, make it sound cool. I mean, it seems cool. But I mean, in all reality, I just don't see anybody breaking their blade in the middle. Even if it is, you know, a harder steel. I just don't see that happening for a pocket knife. You know, I mean, this whole, that whole idea of the different hardnesses kind of originate from samurai swords where they would temper the edge higher and make it harder. But of course, samurai sword is a very thin, long blade that is used in battle. And so the probability of breaking that blade in half was there for sure. So making, you know, the overall blade stronger and tougher with a harder edge made sense but with a with a folding pocket knife I just don't see it but anyways that's the end of my little rant there and there's one more thing I wanted to discuss about this knife and that is the blade stop which is pretty unique I've never seen it before um, it doesn't have a stop pin back here and it obviously does not have thumb studs on the back to contact the scales. Um, what it does have is something completely different and in order to show you I've got to take it apart so I'll be back. Alright, got it apart here you can see the G10 scale we've got the uh, liner here you can see how it's skeletonized very nice, very skeletonized and here is the inside of the blade and as you can see that's the stop right there so there is a cutout made that that stop travels around and it acts as both the oops, closed position stop as well as the open stop. So I thought that was uh, a really cool cool design feature right there. I've never really seen that. Um, you know, and that would work in any and all blade designs whether it's a flipper or thumb studs or combo. So I just wanted to show you guys that little piece right there in case you were interested. Okay, take it easy.